clearly Paul was in the middle of that feed room. It's a kill zone. Nobody in there with him. He's in that room. No defensive wounds at all. His hands are down. And he takes that shot, buckshot to the chest. And any person who did that would probably think that took care of business because this buckshot, but for some reason he was canned this way and it went through. It was a million and one shot. But it didn't kill him. Alec thought it did. Alec, the lawyer, Alec, the prosecutor, Alec is thinking through that we'll see he's manufacturing an alibi and he's also manufacturing the fact that there's two guns used. This is him. This is Alec, the prosecutor, the lawyer. And he's thinking through this. He's thought through this. He's going to use two guns because it's going to confuse people that perhaps there were two shooters. But again, it doesn't make sense. Two family weapons? But he thinks Paul's shot. And you heard the testimony that Paul appears in the feed room doorway. Is Alex putting down that shotgun to pick up the blackout and is startled by Paul and that's why the angle's like that and catches Paul like that and, and goes up into the ceiling as you've heard the testimony from Kinsey and blows blows his brains out and what happens with Maggie right here we see activity on Maggie's phone you heard about Samuel Prince. You heard from Kenny Kinsey about the mark on her leg from the Polaris over there by the overhang next to the feed room. You've seen the diagrams and the crime scene photos that all those cases are in that area between the doorway to the feed room and where Maggie was found. You heard that Maggie had no defensive wounds. You also heard Paul had sibling from that first shot, a close range shot, with no indication that he detected a threat from the person who fired that weapon. And why? Because it was him. Same with Maggie. Because Maggie sees what happens and she comes running over there, running to her baby. Probably the last thing on her mind, thinking that it was him who had done this, she's running to her baby. Well, he's gotten picked up the blackout and opens fire at close range, again with no defensive wounds. And she takes those two shots that you heard Dr. Reber say were parallel, and it crumples her over. In those cases, you can see them move around. And takes that shot that goes through here, and she goes down flat, and then there's the shot in the back of the head. 